What is a family secret you only got told after you got older? That my sister, she was 16 when I was born and kicked out, is my mother. Her mother, my grandma raised me as her daughter. It doesn't end there. I was a product of abuse from a family friend. To this day I don't know who my real dad is. My grandma was in her 40s when she had me. And my sister was sent to a boarding school when she was pregnant with me. My sister has no idea that I know. My uncle came to visit us when I was little and before he came mum sat me down and told me not to be alone with my uncle, and that if he made me feel uncomfortable to let her know. Found out last year that when my mum was nine, she was raped by my uncle. Edit, accidentally wrote her uncle, instead of my uncle in the last sentence. Something felt strange about my grandfather's funeral, just the way they were emphasizing his place in heaven. Later found out that he shot himself in the heart with a 357. Same side of the family also had seemingly random people show up at family gatherings throughout my life that ended up being illegitimate children of my grandma. I just started gaining uncles and cousins. Confused the shit out of me as a child. Grandpa is a pedo with a track record in my family, that's why I never got left alone with him. Unfortunately my cousins did, the expected happened. And then the unexpected, after 40 some years he finally got reported and is now rotting in a county jail. My grandpa burned to death. I found out he died when I was a kid, but was not allowed to go to his funeral, and they told me he had a heart attack. I was so confused because everyone around me would clam up when I asked about him. Turns out that he had a heart attack while trying to put out a field fire, collapsed, and burned. I still have no idea how long it took for people to find him, but I'm assuming it was hours. My sister and I both got UTIs at the same time when our family was staying at our grandparents' house. One day my grandma took both of us aside and started what felt like an interrogation about whether any adults had touched us. Like, if something happened, you have to tell me right now. At the time, I felt gross, confused, and guilty, even though nothing had happened. It was just too intense. I later learned that my grandma had been sexually abused by her brother for years and her mother refused to believe her. When I was around 6 to 8 years old, my uncle passed away. I thought it was something sudden and medically tragic, as I remember him having lung problems of some sort. When I got older I found out he committed suicide, because his girlfriend broke up with him. I remember visiting my dad and hanging out in my uncle's room, where we got to play video games and listen to cool music with him. That was the start of me learning about mental illness running in the family and connected a lot of dots for me. Was told my aunt and uncle died because of a carbon monoxide leak in their house. When I was 16 I was told the truth. My uncle was having serious money problems. He shot my aunt and then hung himself. That my grandmother's husband was a pedophile. All of a sudden I knew why my uncle was so weird and would pick me up and carry me away rather than let me stay alone in a room with him. For the longest time I thought my uncle was a real prude, my male cousins could all swim naked or run around in just their swim trunks, but my uncle made me always wear a swim suit and put on a cover-up when I came out of the pool. He later admitted if God forbid he touched you, I was making sure no one could try to blame you. They blamed all his other victims for being too tempting. My uncle, bless his heart, wanted to kill that man so bad. For that matter so did my dad. Finding out the pedo was, well, a pedo, made all of their muttering to each other at family gatherings make so much more sense. One of my most beloved mom's recipe recipes was actually hamburger helper. She was a from scratch cook and literally everything else we ate she made herself. She never told us because it made her so mad that her kids would love a boxed meal so much. She did it once out of sheer desperation because she didn't have time to cook one night. We ended up loving it. I only found out in college because I begged for the recipe. I love giving her crap for it to this day. My dad never called his stepmom anything but her real name, Margaret. 
He has seven brothers and sisters and they all called her mom, or some form of that. When I got older it turns out my grandpa was actually cheating on my real grandma my dad's mom with Margaret while she was dying for colon cancer. My dad was five when she dies, and as she was dying my dad had to call my grandpa to tell him to come home because she was dying. After that Margaret and her three kids moved in and my dad was forced to live with his sister who was 18 and married, this was late 70s backcountry so not abnormal for the time, from then until he turned 16 when he decided to move in with his best friend and his mom. So I learned that he probably has always had resentment towards Margaret because of everything that happened when he was so young and never wanted to call her anything that resembled a mother because that's not what she was to him. That my aunt's close friend that she lives with is actually her girlfriend. Was about 22 when they told me. Never even thought about it until it was said. Weird how I was completely oblivious to this for so many years. Not all that extreme, but it was emotional for me. My grandfather was the typical tough, rugged mountain man. He never expressed emotion and in fact rarely ever even spoke at family gatherings. He would just sit in the corner drinking beer. I never felt that he and I had a very good relationship, considering I was the weird, artsy kid in the family. We didn't have much to talk about because we couldn't relate to each other well. He died of lung cancer two years ago. A couple of months after he died I was visiting my parents, and my mom pulled out a shoebox that belonged to him filled with sentimental photographs that he kept hidden in his closet. Nobody knew about it until after he died, and they were cleaning his things out. Almost every single photograph was of me. It broke my heart. I wish I would have been closer to him. He clearly loved me a lot more than I thought he did. My late father was a great dad went to work, came home every night, and nothing was really out of the ordinary except that he would ask my sisters and I to let him use the money from our piggy banks, my granddad lived with us, and he had a great pension and relatively no bills, so he spoiled us rotten and would always give us money, because he knew we had it, but told us not to tell anyone and that he'd give it back. He would also really only have two moods, really cranky or extremely sweet, my sisters and I called it his nice face. This was all we knew until I was about in 8th grade. We went to a private school and my dad would tell us school was cancelled, there was a gas leak, institute days etc, and we would stay home, when we would go back to school, nobody else would know what we meant as they had been in school. One day, just before my graduation, my mom let out a scream and started screaming. Our house was being foreclosed on and my dad hadn't been paying the mortgage and had been trying to cover up for the fact that he had been a functional cocaine addict. The nice face was when he was high, the school absences were because he'd spent tuition money on drugs and then had to pay before my mom caught wind. Apparently, it had gotten worse by this time, but he'd been an addict for more than 20 years and none of us knew.